It's week one of the National Football League, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Oilers and the Elks, and it comes your way next on Madden NFL 24. With the Wasatch Mountains overlooking us, EA Sports so proud to welcome you to the capital city of Utah, Salt Lake City. Today, it's the opener of the 2023 NFL season between the Houston Oilers and the Salt Lake City Elks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, there's nothing quite like it. That feeling of beginning another NFL season, and these two squads, they're going to do just that in a moment. And what makes it so exciting is the range of possibilities these teams have before them, because we could be seeing one of these teams earn the Lombardi Trophy in February, while the other, they could earn the number one draft pick in April, or anything in between. New season of NFL football is here, and we're off in 2023 on EA Sports. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And bringing them out is one of the most exciting players in the NFL every season. A former MVP, it's Lamar Jackson. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. From the 25, here's second down and seven. In motion left, Flowers. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. Oh, that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge, and that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. They go play action now. Jackson. And he is caught. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. You know, when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed, his elusiveness, and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Now Jackson on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. Will Anderson on the coverage. Off the option, here's Edwards. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? He's got his target. That's complete. And nothing but green grass here. Middle of the field. Touchdown. Rashad Bateman. 57 yards, and the Elks are on the board here first in the season opener. Excellent start there, first drive of the season, big time success, putting it in the end zone. And remember, that was done without any real map of how to do it. In other words, the deeper you get into the season, you get game film to work off of, tendencies to work off of. The first drive of the season, things could be entirely different than what you've seen in the past. It's a really good job of execution by them. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So the drive there took six plays, and it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. Desmond King to return it from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice 
because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm time when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Throw over the middle, is taken in by Dell. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. He's to the 15, and he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Devin Singletary, 48 yards. And the Oilers are able to strike back quickly with an opening touchdown of their own. But earlier in the week when they had their scouting report meeting, this was the explosiveness that they talked about trying to contain. They were concerned about it all week, yet he still did it to them. Wonder how that's going to carry over the rest of the game. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And he starts his new year off on the right foot as well, as this kick is good. The drive there only spanning three plays. Each team's had it, each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm not no much a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's get credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. A throw over the middle, taken in. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Third and 15 coming up after that loss of two. I think it might be time to move to a different section of the playbook there because back-to-back -back runs, both for loss. Now they have third and long coming up. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Derek Barnett able to maneuver in for the sack. Third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to Jordan get to him Stout in the pocket. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Desmond King deep for Houston. Fielded just inside the 30. They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. First and 10, it's Stroud. That's complete, it's Collins. And just three yards on the catch there, he couldn't get away. 
And it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven at the 41 yard line. Stroud working out of the gun. He's got it to Collins complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Stroud off the play fake. Over the middle, that's caught by Woods. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. First and goal, Houston. They run here with Singletary. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Leads to second and goal at the five-yard line. Stroud looking to throw. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Tank Dell with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And his guys have taken the lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll leave them with third and a full yard to go. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. Breaks a tackle, and he gets it to the 32. Good enough for first down. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Jackson going to keep it running right. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 14 yards that time, and a first down on the keeper. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Steven Nelson, and he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Defense. Defense. Well, sometimes when you try to defend OBJ, you're going to get a P.I. call. You might get a P.I. call at just about any point during his route. And I think a lot of teams have taken the, the whole philosophy of, hey, just go ahead and do what you have to do and hope eventually they'll quit calling it. But not in this case. They drop the flag for the pass interference. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. The catch and run there, good for 16 in the first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. On first and 10, it's Jackson. It's caught by OBJ. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Salt Lake City with the football here to begin quarter two as they are looking at a second and five situation. Going right back 
to Beckham here complete. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. And this offense on third down today, they've been good. Three for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. To throw is Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. But it's going to be second down. From the gun, it's Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and one, Jackson has taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. First and goal at the two-yard line. Edwards is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Second and goal at the two-yard line. Jackson going to run, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Oh, Dale Beckham Jr. on a diving ground. And it's caught. Touchdown. Laying himself out in the end zone. And the Elks are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. A diving catch for the score he laid out. That was special. And you know the first thing they're going to check, right? Did he complete the process of the catch? <laughs> all the way through, all the way to the ground. Ball doesn't hit the ground without control in his hands. All of that, yes. Check the box. Touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. C.J. Stroud and the offense back out there. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head-to-head -head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Back to throw now on second and 10. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. They'll try and run for this with Singletary. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On is the punter, Johnston, now as he sends this one away. Taken in at the 22. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Odell Beckham now marching back onto the field. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? 
I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never you're happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make it. And now off to the races down the right side. He may go. Touchdown. Lamar Jackson with now three week one touchdowns. And the Elks are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd like Lamar Jackson. And we really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all, but I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also electrifying us, and we're calling the game. This guy's simply sensational. Tucker now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Desmond King now to return it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Houston set to take over. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. A shotgun snap to Stroud. That is caught by Dell. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That's good for 28 yards. Well, another completion there. And what a big moment in a young quarterback's life, that first NFL start. And Charles, obviously, they want him to win games. But if they're looking at him under a microscope in this first month or so, what do you think they're hoping to see from him? Well, for every question they'll have for him, they should have for themselves as a coaching staff because it's not just how quickly can he learn the offense, it's what they can teach him, right? How can he build a relationship with his receivers? And, of course, how open is he to learning? And, of course, how open are they to giving him things that he can put in place on the field? Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and a couple. At the 40-yard line. Stroud to throw it. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. First down, Oilers. Here goes Stroud again. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. It's now second down, They'll give this to Singletary running right. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. 55 yards rushing for him now to this point. On the bootleg, Stroud. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that'll bring him back within four. So it was fourth and one down in the red zone, but they elect to take just the three. Now, I'm a little surprised that that's how they decided to play it, that they didn't go for it there, but sometimes just take those three points and put them in your pocket. I just have one question for you, partner. Okay. Hip pocket or back pocket? Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Here's second and 10. They run once more with Edwards. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. 15 yards on the play, first down. 
When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end. Of there he goes, right side. Inside the 10. And all the way in for the touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 61 yards. And they're able to add on to their advantage. So the lanes continue to be there for Lamar Jackson to run that football. That his second touchdown run of the game. You know what I would like? I'd like for us to be able to go into a defense's room after playing Lamar Jackson and watch the tape and see how much of a lane was really there and how much he created just through his talents. In any event, Lamar Jackson finds the end zone, doesn't he? He always seems to, but that's a good point. We sometimes put blame on the defense. Maybe we just need to praise Lamar Jackson a little bit more. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. And now out comes Houston. And after the field goal last time, let's we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead into the kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. A give, Singletary, right side. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Stroud on third down now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's the game of Stroud in the air on first and ten. First down, Houston. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Stroud out of the gun here. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. When the rookie QB gets his first touchdown pass, that's one you put in the trophy case. First career interception, that's going to be one he wants to forget. Yeah, and he's not going to go ask for the football, right? No. Yeah, you can keep that one. The key for him, what does he learn from it? When he watches the tape, does he have an answer right now where he already understands what mistake he made? That's what the coaches are going to want to know, and that's what they'll grill him on and see how he grows from it. After the interception, here's Jackson. And that'll be incomplete. That's tremendous field position that they were given following the turnover, but they've still got work to do to get the field goal range, and the coverage we're seeing isn't going to make it easy. Here's the fourth-year man, J.K. Dobbins. Able to swing her by. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. And a stoppage here for an injury. And not what you want to see. J.K. Dobbins in a little bit of pain after that last play. Now this offense in midseason form here in the opener. It's first and 10. And this is going to be pulled in by the tight end Andrews. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved to the combined 33 yards. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running point for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far on this drive. This offense on the march. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Jackson. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. 
Big play coming here. It's third and goal. To throw again is Jackson. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fours. And how about the coverage here in the end zone? That's how you frustrate a quarterback. You get pressure on, and you take away all of his receivers, and he's got to throw it away on third and goal. Tucker's kick is good. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. We saw a terrific first half from the dual threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. He threw two touchdown passes and he ran for two more. He did it all as his guys were putting up points in bunches. Thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. And this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. And Charles, some things to like about that first half, ultimately trailing here, but certainly this deficit is manageable. So curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission. As am I, because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of their best reps in the first half came through the passing game. They were hitting the open receivers, taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves. Now, they just want to pick up the pace of scoring a little bit. So I expect them to come out, continue to throw the ball effectively. The 33 yard line. Throwing now is Stroud. We'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40 yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. First down, Oilers. Stroud. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. With a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe up to the 41. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on forward. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. They're looking for Andrews, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Christian Harris. And this one will be brought back to the 22. 
But just a lot going on there in the middle of the field, and this one winds up a turnover. Yeah, the run of the crossing route here, and the idea of it is to get defenders confused about who to go with. But if you throw it too early, sometimes it's your quarterback that gets confused. And here, he throws it into coverage and gets it intercepted. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And they'll start with great field position, trying to get back into this one. It's first and ten here. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. Right back to Singletary on second down. And a carbon copy there, at least as far as the results are concerned, as he'll be dropped behind the line yet again. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that is incomplete. With a linebacker diagnosis of the screen, who wins? The quarterback getting a throw over to the back in time? And the linebacker running in to knock it away. With the athleticism of modern linebackers, they win the race more often than not. The kick by Fairbairn is good. So kind of disappointing there. I mean, yes, they get the three, but a starting field position like that, three's not what you're banking on. No, and you just have to wonder if you can afford to let chances like that continue to pass you by. You've got to find ways to get the ball to the end zone and put sixes on the scoreboard. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. The last drive for this offense, Charles, you remember it ended in one play, that quick interception, but they do still have the lead as they start this drive here. And that's something to focus on for them as well because it's not quite no harm, no foul, but the interception, hey, shake it off, move on. Hasn't cost your team the lead, and now it's time to rebound, and the quarterback and his teammates, they can add to the lead with a good drive here. On second down, it's Edwards. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. On third down, Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Over 100 yards receiving for him now in the opener, and it's a first down. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Derek Barnett in there to get him once again. That's two sacks for him now here on opening day. And on now is the punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And a fair catch signal for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. But Houston's offense taken over again. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. From the 21, it's second and 10. Now Stroud. And he can't escape, and down he goes. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. This rookie was already being tested as he tries to lead a comeback here in the second half. 
Now he's got to get some momentum back after that sack and a big loss. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. Well, that was a third long run, and to me, that was just a wave the white flag kind of a situation. Obviously, they don't want to risk the chance of throwing it downfield and risking a turnover in this section of the field. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. And he'll take it on this side of midfield. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. Edwards now on first and 10. And he's got it to about the 40. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman. The ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? The throw here to Andrews, the tight end. Touchdown! Mark Andrews, 40 yards. And the Elks are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Tucker now to add the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. Houston set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. A gain of three, second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. They go right back to Singletary. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 74 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. First down, Houston. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. From the 43, here's a second and seven. Brings up second and seven. A handoff on the option to Singletary. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the broken tackle. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And Stroud now to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. 
And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Here's Jackson to throw. That is caught. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Jackson's throw is on target to Likely. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and nine at their 49-yard line. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back live here now in Salt Lake City. From just shy of midfield, here's second and nine. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. One-yard gains are trending. The same result on first, second, and third down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. So they bring out their putter as he's on to kick it away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. But Houston's offense taking over again. And they knew coming in that this would be a tough place to go in and win a season opener. But this has just been a performance, to be frank, not to be proud of here as they trail big in this fourth quarter. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Stroud looking to throw. Caught left side. Here's Dell. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Here's Stroud. This is caught. It's Woods. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But they trim that lead down to just two scores. That's still a benefit to this squad. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Singletary again. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. Well, partner, you and I will be headed to the airport, but after this game, when it's interview time, someone's going to ask this quarterback what hurt worse, the interceptions or the sacks. This whole day, it's been rough. Barring a miraculous comeback, this offense isn't going to win this game, but he's probably going to say what hurt most is the loss. A 48-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. 
Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still got to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. As you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Brings up second and three at the 27 yard line. And they run the option on second down. And they'll take him down at the 31 yard line. Give him four yards as he does it himself, and it's a first down. And the Salt Lake City, first down. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Again, Jackson will keep it. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 30-yard line. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, you always hate to see injuries, especially tough here in week one. Just hoping this is nothing serious. We'll take a quick timeout. Now it's Jackson. And it's tipped, but he still makes the adjustment. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way and worked out. It doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Altogether, a pretty shaky start to the year for this defense as they defend another first and ten. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. Just a gain of a couple there. And that will bring up second down. Jackson, option right. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. A second and 11 for the 19. Stroud to throw it. That is caught by Dell. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 23 yards to pick up there. Dell making a nice grab there, and he is so good at separating from defenders. It takes a special type of corner to be able to stay in his pocket for long. Give him a couple of seconds, and he'll find a way to get open. On first down, here's Stroud. As this complete to Woods. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. And two yards to go. 
Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Back to throw. Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. He was under duress, surveying, trying to find somebody to get the ball out of his hands. In the meantime, the defense ate out of his hands. And when the ball snapped, I know exactly what the defense is thinking. Get a sack. Put him on the ground. But when you can also knock the ball free while doing so, oh, there's the bonus for you as a defender. On first and ten, it's Dobbins. And he is going to lose yardage here. But derailing that play from the start was Christian Harris. He got back there and stuck him for a loss behind the lot of scrimmage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now it's Jackson. And that will be incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. So with that, you figure uh, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? And it'll come out to the 25 as King opts for the touchback. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on. Moment where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Stroud out of the gun here. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a Okay, so roughing the passer, and I've got to imagine that's the last thing you want to see week one is your quarterback taking an unnecessary hit. I think you're exactly right about that. You hate it any week, but boy, are you on target. This is, you know, this depending on him to take him through 17 games, so you definitely can't let him get hurt right now. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Throwing now is Stroud. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. Fourth down, here's Stroud. And it's incomplete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. 
So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. CD always a little extra excitement for week one and one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's going to have to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of this season. So for Salt Lake City, that'll be a happy...